someone who's famously being called a difficult woman and that's the pre-watershed <laughs> version. Now, is it a fair description? Well, let's ask the man who knows her best, because our guests tonight are the Prime Minister, Theresa May, and her husband, Philip. Well, let's get down to the nitty-gritty then, Philip. I mean, how hard is it to win a negotiation with your wife? Oh, that's a good question. Well, there's, there's give and take in every marriage, isn't there? Of course. There? Yeah. I, I get to decide when I take the bins out. Not if I take the bins out. <laughs> but, I mean, of there's course... There's boy jobs and girl jobs, you see. There's boy oh, really? jobs and girl yeah, jobs. The, who, yeah, what, what boy, boy and girl jobs? I, I definitely do the, the taking the bins out. I do the traditional boy jobs, by and large. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, of course, Prime Minister, you um, famously used the B word when you were describing how difficult you can be. So this is something, obviously, that, that you do recognise as far as negotiations I, I, are concerned? I was... Well, I, when I used it, I was, of course, using a description that somebody else, a colleague, had, had used of me. Yeah. Mm. But I'm just sort of making the point that, actually, you know, when you're in negotiations, you need to be tough. Yeah. And, actually, it's right to be tough sometimes, particularly when you're doing something for the country. Yes, yes. And yeah. recently you went on a lovely walking holiday in Snowdonia. Absolutely. And you came back and decided that you would call an election. Now, originally you said that you wouldn't do that until 2020, mm. but, obviously, you'd had a change of mind. What was the conversation, then, that led up to that point? And, Philip, did you think, hang on, we're on holiday here, what are we having this <laughs> chat about now for? When you're married to the PM, of course, work inevitably <laughs> intrudes, <laughs> but... Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it, it was... I had said, as you said, that I wouldn't have an election for 2020 because mm. when I became PM last year, uh, I think the most important thing was stability. Yes. And I wanted to give the country that stability and show that we were getting on with the Brexit process. Mm. Um, but when we were going through the process of triggering Article 50, it just became clear that other parties were looking ahead to disrupt negotiations and I just felt it was important to have an election to get a clear mandate uh, to and then take that forward and strengthen yeah. the UK's hand in negotiating because it is going to be tough. Yeah. Mm. So with with that particular walking holiday, then did you go to clear your mind so that you would get sorted, or is it something that just kind of happened we when you go were there? because we love walking in the Welsh mountains? I mean, oh, that is the good reason. Choice. That is the yeah. reason yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah. We do. We do love it. It is. I mean, Adelaide address is beautiful, Tarder. isn't it? Yeah. It is beautiful. When we eventually get to the top, I'll. I'll, I'll <laughs> to be able to we have been up once. We've been up once. Yes. <laughs> what was the drive back to London like? When you, you know, once you've decided? Um, well, I don't think it was any different from I mean, the, the, the point is that, you know, in this role, from time, you are making tough decisions. Yeah. I'm making yeah. tough decisions yes. from time to time. And I think the important thing is that whatever you're looking at, whatever you're doing, do what you think is right. Yeah. And, and, you know, when you've decided what you think is right, then just get on with the job and get on with it. And head down. Well, yes. Now, one European institution, I'm sure the Mays are firmly behind, is Eurovision. We, now, we're not leaving that as well, are we? No. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm, I'm tempted to say, in current circumstances, I'm not sure how many votes we'll get. But, yeah, uh, well, Neil that's going to be very interesting come Saturday. <laughs> very interesting indeed. Well, <laughs> Lots of food for thought there. But, of course, Prime Minister, politicians, I mean, they have a major responsibility in this as well. As soon as you bring spin doctors into the mix and they're asking you to present maybe stories that aren't 100% true. And as, as, uh, Have you ever been in situations like that where you've given in to the spin doctors? Well, I... I the way I approach my politics is that, to me, I'm actually going out and asking people to vote for me. I'm asking them to put their trust in me. Yeah. So I yeah. think it's important that I'm open with them and tell it, tell it as it is yeah. um, when, I'm, when I'm addressing them. But we've had our own experience of sort mm. of yes, we have. fake news. Way, way back when I was mm. wanting on. to be selected for a seat, one of the newspapers reported I was going to have trouble being selected to fight a seat as a, as a Conservative candidate because of my new baby. Well... We didn't have a baby, no. um, right. and we didn't think any more of it until that afternoon my mother-in-law rang. My mum rang. So she thought perhaps it was something we hadn't told her. Oh, oh really? Oh. <laughs> so she was disappointed. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. sure yeah. she was. Yeah. Very yeah. disappointed. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go back to the beginning, then. You spoke about your mum-in-law there. Um, you were the daughter of, of a vicar, very solid upbringing. Um, was there any chance that you would have rebelled at all or, you know, the values that were instilled then, are those the values that you've very much taken forward with you? Mm. Yes, I think they, they are. I mean, I was... There were several things. I mean, my, my 
very much obviously being brought up in a vicarage. Mm. It's uh, you get to meet a whole range of different people from all types of backgrounds. And one of the things my father taught me is that you should take people as you find them, mm -hmm. not have any preconceptions about people, and treat everybody equally. Yeah. And that was an important, uh, important lesson that I had. But of mm. course, you know, life in a vicarage is, is different. Because yeah. mm -hmm. um, you get so many people coming in to see you, don't people you? People call you just meet so many people in the village, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 And is, is it right your father was a, a shoe salesman? Yeah, yes, he, yes, he w worked in for a footwear company for the whole of his career, in fact, mm -hmm. as people did in those days. You know, he joined the same company uh, in the late 1940s and carried on doing that till the 1980s yeah. when he retired. Yeah. So you, you see that upbringing and that contact, as you say, you know, gives you that insight of, of, of the majority of working Britain. I think so, yes. I mean, I think that's the point. I've yeah. had the opportunity to interact, to, to meet, to talk to people, and to see a, a, an insight into people's lives. And of course, that's what you're able to do as a Member of Parliament, mm. of course, you know, with people who come to you in your surgery and so forth. You really get an insight into people's lives. What's your earliest memory then of wanting to become Prime Minister? Because many people say, you know, oh, she didn't necessarily want to, it just happened. But, but what is the actual truth on that? Well, th there are one or two stories go around which I, I don't recognise myself about how early I might have thought about this. I know not really. I mean, I, one of the other things that I was taught by my parents is whatever job you're doing, just get on and do your best in that mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. And that's how I've approached everything in my career. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I was doing. But so of I, course, sorry. Um, well, I knew you were interested in politics, but yeah. I, I never heard Theresa say she wanted to be prime minister Minister's until, too. you know, mm -hmm. until she was well established in, in you know in the shadow cabinet. Mm -hmm. But then we were looking at some footage, weren't we? Uh, yeah. And we found you, Philip, back in 1986. Yes, the Conservative really? Party oh, Congress. Yes. Right. There you go. So it could very much have been you, Philip. <laughs> so how did you decide which one was going to stand for office and which one would kind of do, you know, if you want a sort of a normal job? Well, I'm, uh, I'm not sure it was a sort of... No, I don't think it was quite as sort of it just, thought through as that in a way. It's that mm. the, we were asked if one of us would like to stand for the local council and you, you were very keen to stand and yes. rightly so actually. And it sort of fitted at, at the time. If it just worked for us. Work, yeah. Work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because really where it all started was, was university and you were studying geography, is that right? So did you, yes. did you have a sense then that you wanted to change Britain? And I'm not talking about being Prime Minister here, just getting into politics. I, well, I wanted to become an MP from quite an early age. Mm -hmm. From when I was at school, I wanted to become an, an MP. Yeah. And as, as Philip says, obviously, when we met, he knew that I was interested in, in politics. Yeah. Um, and I've, it's always, for me, it's always been about making a difference. Right. Because politics is about people, and it's about improving people's lives. And it's about just feeling that the decisions you're taking, you have to, as I said earlier, take what you believe to be the right decision. Mm. But doing things that really will help people to get on and have a better future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can you can you describe the minute because I think lots of people don't feel that they necessarily know a lot about you as the person. How did it feel when it dawned on you, oh my gosh, I'm going to become prime minister. This is it. Well, it's I mean obviously uh, having taken the decision to stand for the Conservative Party leadership last summer that you you think about that. But I think when it um Perhaps it, it absolutely dawns on you when you're walking through mm. the door of number 10 for the first time mm. in that role. And it's, uh, it's a huge privilege, but yeah. you also actually do feel a huge responsibility. Oh, I'm sure. It is yeah. very, yeah. yeah. I think speaking as a spouse is very, the whole thing's very, you know, you, very humbling, really. You think, mm. gosh, you know, so many people are entrusting their, their futures to, to Theresa and the team she leads. And I just think that's, that's incredible, really. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting you're talking about the team there because since the year dot it's always been about the conservative party but as far as the kind of marketing that we've seen over the last few days is concerned it's very much been about you prime minister and you know vote for, for me theresa may and you know my 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 my, my local candidates as well so do, how comfortable are you sitting with that with that kind of it's quite presidential in that way well it's not i mean it's it's uh, it is about the conservative party mm. it's about a team of, of people in the conservative party mm -hmm. and obviously i'm the leader of that party the leader yes. of that team but it's also about the fact that I think at this election the choices is about leadership uh, for the about future of individuals, the country. right? Well, it's about it's about having a strong and stable government. It's about leadership, strong and stable leadership, because you know we mentioned earlier 
tough negotiations coming ahead. Mm. There will be tough times getting Brexit right. And I think you've, you need to have that stability and that mm. certainty to be able to do that. But it's not just about Brexit, mm. it's about taking the country beyond Brexit as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, OK, we're going to uh, move got, on. Um, right, we're going to talk about your partnership now because this is what everybody wants to know. So you were intro to each other at Oxford Uni, weren't you? So we'll go in turn. Philip first, first impressions of your wife-to-be at the what, time. What a lovely girl. And <laughs> she still is. <laughs> Philip, did you fancy her instantly? Absolutely. Excellent. No, it was. No, it was. It was, it was love at first sight, absolutely. Yeah. And, and likewise, and likewise. Then, Prime Minister. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, so, um, it sounds a bit like this is your life, this, isn't it? Does, it? Yes. Love blossomed and then you were married by your yeah. father. Yes. Um, yes. We've, got, we've got actually got your wedding photo here. Um, so many faces. And, you know, mm. when you look at that photo, what memories does that bring for you, Prime Minister? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, it's, it's um, those are my, uh, obviously, my parents and my mother's mother, so my maternal grandmother mm. there. So, I mean, I suppose it brings back huge memories mm. of, of just a very happy childhood, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. in, in, I mean, we were talking earlier about life mm. in a vicarage, which is slightly different, but it, it's just very, very happy, a very mm. stable. Mm. I was very fortunate, very stable. Mm. Um, and I think, crucially, from my uh, parents, they were very much of the view that it was up to me what I wanted to do. They didn't yeah. Yeah. sort of say, you can't do that mm. because you're a girl or you can't do this. You know, it was very which much... Which is great, mm. isn't which it? Which is great. And time yes. was incredibly precious with them at mm. that point because it was yeah. only yeah. a year or so later yes. when, yeah. when, when things didn't go. So yes, yeah. that's right. No, not that we were to know that, no. of course, no. at that point. No. Yeah, so it's a very much a treasured photograph, I'm sure. Yes. Um, and behind every busy woman, and you're particularly busy, is always a strong and very supportive husband. Um, what... Are the downsides, though, Philip, you know, in being married to the Prime Minister? Well, first of all, it's an enormous privilege for Theresa to, you know, to, for Theresa to, to be doing this job, mm. for me to, to be there alongside her. And I mm. think I get to, to meet the most fascinating, interesting people. Mm. I, I get to do some things mm. I wouldn't otherwise do. And, you know, it is, it is a huge privilege. Mm. So there is, you know, there isn't really a downside. But mm. obviously, if you're the kind of man who expects his, to be, his tea to be on the table at six o'clock every evening, mm -hmm. you could be a little bit no. disappointed. Mm -hmm. Do you make the tea? From time to time. From time to time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. is a very good cook. Yeah. is a very, very good cook indeed, mm -hmm. actually. And you have a large number of cookery books. I have a large well. number of cookery books, yes. At, at home, obviously, we, we live in the uh, flat in Downing Street, but yeah. we yeah. like to get yeah. home at weekends, and that's where most of my cookery books are. So. And, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, I mean, who knows what time it is, because every day must be different, but when you get home, what... How, how do you try and leave work at number 10? And, and Philip, what do you see your role as being here? Just try to give Theresa as much support as mm. I possibly can, Matt. I think that's that's just really important. I mean, it is, it's obviously a very tough job. There are a lot yeah. of tough decisions. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things that, you know, you really have to work very hard at as PM. And I think I'm there to give Theresa as much support as I possibly can, just the way she's she's always given well, me support. Well, I was going to say, it's, it's, yeah. it's a two-way two two street. Yeah. street. It is that's a two-way right. street, yes. absolutely mm. right. And when you've experienced so much of each other's lives, because you met when you were so young and all of this has happened to you, you must feel like you're, you're almost one as opposed to individuals. Mm -hmm. Yes, I suppose it's... Well, but, still, I mean, I think the point is we're still individuals, yeah. but we know each other really yeah. well, you know, yeah. when you've been married as course, long yeah. as we yeah. have, yeah. Uh, nearly 37 yeah. years, yeah. You, you get to know each other, yeah. you know, really mm. well. And um, who has banned the red box from the bedroom? Which one? I don't think it's ever made an appearance in the bedroom. Ah. <laughs> I've never had to. I've never had to try and sort of... Get it, get, get get it out. Get, chew it out. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, how, um, how happy are you with the whole shoe thing, Prime Minister? And, you know, do you wish it was just, you know, left be and you enjoy your fashion and this, that and the other? I mean, everybody seems to be commenting on it. Um, it's... Well, look, it, it's... I, I like buying nice shoes. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that yeah. gives me... And it gives me a reason for going and buying some more. But it, it can have... <laughs> <a> thing, <laughs> yeah. It, it can have a serious side to it. And just to tell you a little story, this happened about, I suppose, four or five years ago. Um, I was in the lift in the House of Commons and there was a young woman in the lift and I happened to look down and I said, oh, nice pair of shoes. And she said, oh, I like your shoes. And then she looked at me and she said, your shoes got me involved in politics. Right. And now, you, you know, yeah. but there was somebody who'd, you know, through something quite sort of normal, just seeing an mm. interest in shoes, mm. she got interested in politics and was now working in the House of Commons. Yeah. Mm. So, um, you know. what, what's your shoe equivalent, Philip? Um, that's a very good question, actually. I quite, I, I quite like sort of, I mean, 
ties, although I'm not wearing one this evening. It's a bit, I mean, like jackets, stuff like that, yeah. you know, fairly normal. Is main there much stuff, space really. for you in the wardrobe at number 10, though? <laughs> I, 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 I sort of get a section, little section of my <laughs> car down for myself. <laughs> Well, we're going to uh, we're going to say thank you very much yes, for joining it's, us. It's been... um...